Things have been moving pretty fast in the AI video space. And today I've got a look at one of my favorite video generators, Kling, with their 1.5 update. Today we're gonna to take a deep dive into the new model and all of the new features that have been added. Some tips and tricks that I picked up, community outputs, of course, Plus, I've got a little bit of a backdoor sneak peek into something really big that is coming up on the platform. Okay, let's dive in. So if you've been a little out of the loop, Kling is a well fairly new AI video generator that has been making waves. Initially, it was a bit of an ordeal to get access. You had to like have a Chinese mobile phone number and then download an app, which then linked to another app. Like it was, it was a mess. I am happy to report that things have gotten a lot easier. You just go to the website, log in, and start generating. To start, Kling 1.5 is now generating at 1080p when you're using the professional mode. Now, professional mode does cost you more credits, but for me, it's kind of like the de facto standard. The output is just a lot better. Another update is that Kling now has motion brush. Now, there is a bit of an asterisk to this. Motion Brush has been a long awaited tool in kind of this 2.0 era of AI video generation. And apparently Kling is the first to get there. Now that said, the Motion Brush is only currently supported in the 1.0 model. So meaning we don't actually have access to it yet in the 1.5 model. We'll take a look at it later on though. And finally, they have also introduced end frames into the 1.0 model. Again, this will be coming soon to the 1.5 model. So all that out of the way, let's go take a look and see what 1.5 looks like. Kicking off with our man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. Now this is the 1.0 model. I just wanted to showcase this before we hopped over to the 1.5 model. Uh, overall, yeah, I mean, always impressed with Kling's output. Everything looks really coherent here. There is a car back here that's like driving backwards, but it also sort of looks like he's like backing up to pick somebody up. My only complaint is that it's a bunch of pedestrians just walking down the street, which is why traffic is so terrible in the city. Running that same prompt in the 1.5 model gets us a 10 second shot that very much makes me want to play the soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever. Um, overall, yeah, I'm really happy with this shot. Something that we're definitely seeing in this latest crop of AI video generators is more interesting camera angles and movement. Staying on with the text to video examples, here we have a dark wizard uh, reading a spell book in front of a gloomy castle, or it's just Craig playing with dry ice again. Overall, I think this is a, a pretty cool shot, again, illustrating that we've got some really interesting angles and dynamic movement happening in our outputs. There is obviously some coherence issues with the bats flying around. We're going to talk about how to kind of tamper that down in just a little bit. Moving on to another example that I've been showcasing a lot on the channel. This is a noir detective in a crime alley. Yeah, really blown away by this one. The walk cycle on the detective is particularly impressive to me. You remember when we were blown away by Sora's Tokyo woman walking? Yeah, that's just like, that's old hat at this point now. Another output from Crime Alley, and I wanted to showcase this one to illustrate how good Kling's prompt uh, adherence is. First of all, the prompts have actually gotten up to a character limit of 2,500. And given this prompt, which admittedly, I did actually use the Minimax GPT that I created in an earlier video for this prompt. Um, but you know, you have things like uh, a detective in a classic trench coat and fedora, did get all of that, uh, crouches in an alley, a small note left as a clue. But what really impressed me is that within the prompt, we have the scene ends with the slow zoom in on the note, intensifying the mystery. Uh, and although obviously we are not getting a zoom in, it's more of a dolly in, um, it definitely begins to angle towards the note, indicating that indeed, you know, Kling understood the assignment. Whenever a new model comes out, I always do like to check to see if I'm in there. So, you know, I took a screenshot of myself, created a prompt out of it, and well, we got this guy who is A, way cooler and way more handsome than I am. So no, I am clearly not in the model. Another text to video example of a spaceship flying over New York City, or at least in like AI representation of New York City. Uh, again, yeah, just really blown away by the shadows, um, motivated light source coming in from the sun there. Shadow is casting correctly. This looks great. All that said, it is still text to video. So look, you're gonna end up with some weird stuff. I don't love cherry picking. So uh, here is a bald hitman in a abandoned warehouse in a shootout. It starts off pretty good with him sort of walking towards camera, but then as soon as we get that turn, I mean, that's kind of a mess there. That said, for certain shots, that kind of chaos can actually work to your advantage. Uh, now, if you are trying to kind of tamper things down a little bit, 
the setting here between creativity and relevance, I think it defaults at like 0.4 uh, leaning towards creativity. So if you actually pull that back a little bit to like 0.6 or even 0.65, you won't end up with as much dynamic motion, but things also might hold together a bit. Like I don't really necessarily love this shot, but it definitely isn't as wild and chaotic as you know those previous shots were. He does kind of stand around for about a second and a half before moving in. I do think that there's something that you could mine out of this shot. But again, sometimes that morphiness can actually work to your advantage. Uh, for example, here in this zombie outbreak in a mall. Yeah, I mean, it's a mess. It's, you know, uh, people are morphing and distorting all over the place. But uh, to me, there's a lot of like chaotic energy here. I think you can mine two or three seconds, beat it up with a couple of like VHS filters, and you might have something that looks really cool. If you want to try to tame some of that decoherence down, uh, you can utilize negative prompts as uh, Halim Al-Rashi, I hope I got that right, uh, points out here, um, try negative prompts like artifacts slow, ugly, blurry, deformed, multiple limbs. Uh, I will put this down in the description so that you can copy paste it in. And indeed, running our Halloween Black Friday sale prompt again yielded this. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's definitely more improved when you utilize negative prompts. Sliding over to the land of image to video, it only kind of made sense to take a shot from my AI short film, Dead Sea, namely that of Captain Renfield here, and rerun him, uh, considering that I utilize Kling for a lot of that film. Um, yeah, and running him, I think that this looks great. I mean, you end up with this 10 second shot where he is very animated and talking. There's definitely a lot more hand movements uh, this time around. 1.5 definitely feels, at least on the image to video side, to not be quite as hallucinating. Uh, like this is the 1.0 output from the film um, that was an outtake, where you know it almost looks like Captain Renfield's like line, and then you know, like a PA goes over and it's just like yar. The line is yar. That said, I have noticed that there is definitely a hit in like the overall luminance when you start getting into these 10 second shots. It, you really notice it when you've got sort of darker scenes like Captain. Captain Renfield here. I will say that Captain Renfield himself does stay pretty sharp. That's something that we have seen a lot in other AI video extensions where, you know, everything goes dark and everything goes soft. Keeping on with the pirate theme, of course, we are going to run our girl, Daniela Van Den Ankh, dressed as a pirate. Now, something kind of interesting ends up happening here. We've seen pretty often when you run an illustrated image through image to video, it tends to slowly morph into something that looks photorealistic. Um, and indeed, that does end up happening here. It starts off a little weird. She's got a bit of an evil smile there. But as this continues on, it you know morphs her into something that looks photorealistic. But by the end of it, we end up with an image of her that maintains all of the characteristics and attributes of the illustrated version, but actually looks like a real person. You know, I, I don't know how many times we've run her on this channel, and this is the first time that I've seen that illustrated image look like a real person. Now that said, 1.5 is capable of holding, you know, sort of an animated illustrated style as we see here. Um, now there are some problems and just in general, I've noticed that about 1.5, the hands here are kind of a bit of a mess. And in general, I've noticed that 1.5 does tend to have a lot of decoherence in the hands once you get AI hands. I mean, what can I say? Rounding out with another one that I'd like to test and thus far, no model has really been able to nail and, you know, Kling does a pretty admirable job. It doesn't quite get there. Uh, this is Godzilla rampaging through a city. Uh, now, I did forget to put negative prompts into this one, so things get a bit weird. Uh, like at some point, Godzilla just drops to his uh, his his paws. Paws? Does Godzilla have paws? Uh, and you know, starts running on all fours. Uh, I again, I did forget to put negative prompts in here. One thing that I did think was pretty cool about this shot, though, is that as the camera pans. We end up getting this whole other section of the city and I've never seen another video model do that. So this definitely does play into the whole like world model idea. Running it with negative prompts though, uh, we ended up with this and that is actually really good. That's, uh, it unfortunately just devolves after this where Godzilla kind of squats down and lifts up his tail like he's about to skunk spray that building. At least I hope it's skunk spray and not something else because th that's a real mess to clean up jokes aside i do want to point out that if you were just to clip like those first three some odd seconds from this output i mean that's pretty much a shot from a godzilla movie 
So before moving over to community outputs, I did just want to quickly highlight the new motion brush feature. Now, again, this is only in the 1.0 model for now. Uh, the way that you do this is obviously, you know, you upload an image reference and then we have this motion brush uh, selection here. Uh, we hit that and that will bring up our motion brush canvas. I think this should look familiar to anyone that's used Gen 2 or uh, even Pixiverse actually. Um, so we have this auto segmentation slider up here. You can turn that on and that'll sort of like auto mask certain areas. Um, so one interesting thing is if we just do the face here um, and then move over to this track, um, you can then just kind of put, um, you know, sort of arrows into the overall direction that you want, you know, your character to go into. Um, so when I ran this, the resulting output was this girl who kind of makes a turn and then looks down. That's, I think, just because I targeted her face. So, uh, yeah, definitely a cool feature. Something that I'm probably not going to play around with too much because I'm going to be concentrating on the 1.5 model. But hopefully it won't be long before, you know it hops its way over there. So moving over to some community outputs, Ludovic Creator uh, went a little crazy with the motion brush there, um, targeting this Starship Trooper's head, arms, uh, and I guess laser rifle uh, with various arrows and ended up with this as a result. So pretty cool, definitely shows that motion brushes are working in Kling. Brent Lynch gives us a man in a blue business suit trapped in a mall during a zombie outbreak. See, that's what happens when you screw up city traffic plans. Alice Pashasku gives us the shot of like three, I don't know, kind of post-apocalyptic wasteland survivors. Um, yeah, looks really solid here. And then he follows it up with a giant mech bursting out of icy cold waters, like it's some version of Pacific Rim Norway. Uh, I don't know if those two shots are part of the same project. I really genuinely hope they are because this looks awesome. Mark K gives us a first person video game output out of Kling. Uh, this looks really impressive. Actually, all in all sort of reminds me of Killzone or like Killzone 3. Uh, it's funny because, you know, yeah, it's video game footage, but uh, with the chromatic aberrations and whatnot there, it, it actually kind of comes off as cinematic to me. Bjork Chevier shows us the kind of emotional range of Kling's outputs uh, with this you know, young woman, I, presumably she's looking at her bank statement a month after getting into AI tools and seeing that she has no money because of all the subscription costs. You know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't just do sad. It can obviously do happy. So I think that very much shows like the range that Kling is capable of. That kid's diaper is looking pretty full. I think Godzilla left something behind there. And finally, friend of the channel, Uncanny Harry, gives us a werewolf running, shooting a machine gun, which is awesome because it's a werewolf running, shooting a machine gun. Now, as to what's upcoming with Kling, and I think this is going to get you pretty excited, since launch, uh, we've had this video creator tab here that's been grayed out. It is coming soon. And if you've been wondering what that's going to look like, uh, well, yeah, there's already a version of it on the Chinese mobile app. Um, so yeah, you you know we have this screen here. I'm gonna hit a previously generated uh, video that I did. Uh, take a look at that. This is like you know cyberpunk woman walking with a katana. Um, yeah, there's a full timeline down there and everything. You have options to change the aspect ratio and even kick up the resolution to two to four K. We have controls here for color, contrast, uh, structure, all of the you know sort of normal things. So you can do color correction right in the app. It's possibly a voiceover studio in here as well, and uh, I mean just you know standard effects and all of that stuff. So yeah, it, it basically is a fully functioning uh, nonlinear editor that's that's you know built into the app. But being able to adjust things like, you know, color contrast or even luminance as we ran into with Captain Renfield right on platform. I mean, that's pretty powerful. So I'm not sure when this is going to be released. And to note, this only exists on the Chinese mobile app version. So there is like the Kling Chinese website as well. Uh, it's not like they have it and the international version doesn't have it. They're not holding it back or anything. I think they're probably just developing how it will work on a website. Obviously, I will be keeping an eye on the Kling developments and I will let you know as, you know, as soon as I hear something. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.